Now, a waswasa uh, is translated as whispers from shaitan. It appears in Surah Al-Nas, Alladhi yuwaswisu fi suduri nas that shaitan is the one who whispers into the heart or into the, the chest of people. Um, waswasa is regarded in modern language as OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And it is a more specific element within this, you know, broad sense of OCD. But it is important to note that when we speak about OCD in modern psychological terms, which I'm not qualified to speak about at all, um, it may be, you know, shading some of its elements. But as far as the Sharia is concerned, um, OCD is not going to be necessarily, you know, 100% applicable because there's an element of the metaphysical. In other words, there's an element of the unseen. So in psychological terms, it may just be purely a psychological element. Whereas within sacred law, it is broader than that because there's an element of the unseen, there's an element of shaitan and his insinuations and his whispers um, and distractions. Another term that has been utilized for this, which I think would probably be more applicable and Allah knows best, is religious scrupulosity, uh, where somebody becomes very scrupulous about the religious matters. This can manifest itself in several ways um, from what we've seen. And we, you know, on this uh, answers forum, we do receive many, many questions in relation to this because uh, I suppose Shaitan is very busy. And in a world of distraction and in a world where our minds are bombarded with an overload of information, it's easy for minds to, to fall down this rabbit hole. And what it does, a person becomes obsessed with the idea that something hasn't been done correctly or that a mistake was made or that he hasn't met a particular condition. It sometimes takes place within Istinja, where a person believes they haven't washed the private parts correctly or that there may still be a trace of something. It can take place within Wudu, where a person believes that they haven't washed a limb correctly and they need to rewash a particular limb or they're not sure if they washed a particular limb. Or it can take place within Salah, where a person believes that they haven't formulated their intention correctly or they haven't pronounced a particular letter correctly or they made a sound and perhaps it broke their prayer or perhaps they didn't pray, you know, the second raka'ah, so they're unsure whether they're in the third or the fourth raka'ah. Uh, it can take place in statements. So people are scared that they um, uttered words of divorce, right? Even though they said nothing in relation to divorce, but the thought came across the mind. Um, others would be worried about statements of kufr. So they said something, they laughed at something, they heard something, they thought something. Uh, are, are they now outside of the fold of Islam? So there are various expressions of this, but there's one solution uh, in relation to this as far as Sharia is concerned. So our general recommendation is that number one, seek psychological help for this. Number two, seek spiritual help for this. Number three, don't try to apply Islamic law in order to resolve this because you are only going to make matters worse, right? So asking a million questions about is my wudu valid? Is my salah valid? Did I break my my marriage, etc.? It's not going to help at all. It's just going to feed the waswasa. And the more attention you pay to this distraction from shaitan, the more power you give it. And the further and further it will send you spiraling into this abyss of darkness. So the recommendation is seek psychological help, seek spiritual help, and absolutely ignore these insinuations absolutely ignore them don't give any attention to them and do not act upon them regardless of how strong they may be so um, if you find yourself um, for example in salah we learn that look if you are in the first raka'ah and would rather if you are in the second raka'ah and then you're thinking, am I in the third raka'ah or am I in the second raka'ah? Then the ruling is, I should assume that I'm only in the second raka'ah and then I complete my salah accordingly. That is under normal circumstances. This is for somebody who faces this type of thing once in a while, um, you know, every now and then, for example. But generally, they know, they know where they are at. But if this is something that plagues you in practically every prayer, or if it's something that 
uh, occurs in your wudu, in your istinja, in your salah, etc., then this ruling simply doesn't apply to you. Nor does it apply in your wudu, nor does it apply in anything else. So, as an example, in your ablution, if you perform ablution and you're thinking, did I wash this limb correctly? The ruling is, ignore that, continue washing the rest of your limbs, even if your mind is telling you, no, you didn't wash this limb correctly. In istinja, you istinja to the minimum degree required. So, you, for example, wipe three times and use water, and that's it. You don't wash an extra time, you don't wipe an extra time, you don't you look, you know, and go deeper as far as wiping is concerned to see if there's anything. You completely ignore it and you carry on. In salah, if you're unsure of whether you are in the first raka'ah, the second raka'ah, or the third raka'ah, you should assume I'm in the, the greater number as opposed to the lesser number, which is the normal ruling, and you continue in that regard. Um, Insha'Allah, by applying it like this, you will be able to defeat shaitan in this regard. But by giving in, even to the slightest degree, you're going to give power to Iblis, power to shaitan in this regard. And you are not going to be following the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are affected by this, it is imperative that you seek spiritual help. So go to the mashayikh, the scholars who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for appropriate uh, litanies of adhkar. Um, there are, you know, very straightforward litanies that you could be reciting, like the morning and evening supplications for protection from the Prophet or as reported from the Prophet and reciting La ilaha illallah in abundance, and reciting A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim before engaging in any acts of uh, ritual um, worship. When you experience any form of waswasa, to also immediately take refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan. And again, as we've emphasized time and time again, it is essential. As soon as you suspect that you are suffering from waswasa, that you are su suffering from any form of OCD or religious scrupulosity, remember Allah is merciful. Allah is not going to put you through this type of trial and tribulation in your deen. That the Prophet ﷺ taught us that Islam is, is easy to practice, that this is nothing but shaitan trying to distract you. And if you want to be a a uh, pious slave, an obedient slave to Allah, that you would ignore shaitan, ignore your thoughts, and just continue doing the bare minimum to ensure that you've covered your, your salah. And then if you start having waswasa about the bare minimum, you forget about that and you ignore that as well and you continue, right? You block it and you ignore it. One takbir with an intention, that's it. If you are unsure of your intention, you are unsure of your takbir, you would just continue. You don't make another takbir. You don't make another intention. If you start doubting your intention, it's from shaitan. Ignore it. Continue. If you are afflicted with waswasa while reciting, you just continue reciting. You ignore the waswasa and you continue. When you are in doubt about the number of raka'at, um, you know, that you've prayed or that you haven't prayed, you know, you don't assume the minimum. You assume the maximum. You finish your prayer and you ignore it. Uh, know that this is from shaitan and if you feel guilty because of doing this you know you feel guilty because what if i didn't do this what if allah is going to punish me is allah going to punish me what's going to happen in the day of qiyamah this too is from shaitan you ignore it and you continue and as harsh as this may uh, sound and as harsh as this may seem only a person who has been afflicted by this and has been affected by this would understand the reason for the harshness uh, it is not something that is going to be defeated by logic or by reasoning or by gentleness. This is something that requires a harsh approach and it is up to the individual to decide if, that, if you are serious about defeating this disease, if you are serious about defeating shaitan in this regard because it is a distraction, then you need to take this seriously and absolutely ignore this. And this is the advice that we find from our traditional scholars like Imam al-Nawawi, Imam ibn Hajar al-Haytami, great Shafi'i scholars, and uh, we should follow through with this, both classical as well as contemporary scholars in relation to this. And when you learn fiqh and you study fiqh, understand that your case, right, because you suffer from waswasa, you are always going to be an exception to the rule. So wherever, wherever the fiqh mentions, if there's a doubt here, if there's a doubt there, then do this, then do that. It doesn't apply to you until and unless you have completely defeated this waswasa and Allah knows best. So uh, may Allah have mercy on us and grant us afia in this life uh, so that we can be free from these 
doubtful whispers of shaitan and may Allah protect our ibadat and not allow us to be distracted by the evil plans and plots of Iblis. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah